hello welcome back to my youtube channel thanks for always stopping by if you're joining us for the first time thanks for watching this platform this channel is about how to make money online side hustles how to make extra income either by selling physical products serv digital services or online or online products okay so if you're just joining us please subscribe turn on your notification button as i upload video every week so you don't miss out on any if you're a regular thanks for always making our channel lively thanks for stopping by thanks for always watching so last video i talked about a website called alibaba.com one app and today is more like a follow-up video because it looks like a lot of people were interested in that video and some people reached out to me to give them more insight about this platform so this is the tips i'm going to be spilling today so i'll be giving you eight things you must do before placing your first order on alibaba all right before you place your first ever order on alibaba i need you to watch this video and make sure you tick the eight boxes i'm going to be talking about before you can make your purchase this is first to protect you from illegitimate suppliers on alibaba.com and also to make sure your brand gets the top suppliers okay first thing i'll be talking about is select qualified suppliers how do you know qualified suppliers i will tell you things you need to keep in mind sorry if you see me look down just know i'm looking at my notepad i'm trying to get all the points because it's a whole lot so i don't want to forget anything that's why i just had to put it down so the first thing you need to understand is alibaba badge systems this form this this form of system badge system is basically into two it's a two system you have the gold suppliers and the verified suppliers gold suppliers means suppliers that have paid a membership fee but what's more is important is the verified suppliers so which means the suppliers need to be audited by a third party before they can get that badge so it's either done online or offline so there is a, a system management and products what am i saying so the system management and products has been audited and verified with this you will have a peace of mind knowing that what you see on their page is what you get this is very helpful because any products you search on alibaba will show you tons of products so you use the filter to check for only verified suppliers only in to, to check verified suppliers in any product you want to place your order on or any niche so what i'm trying to say is verified suppliers are what you need before you need them you need to order from a verified supplier that's just it so the second tip is check how many years they have been on alibaba you need to check how many years they've been on alibaba this is very helpful as most of those on the platform may not you know may not really have the experience some of them are just in their first year and their second year and if you go with someone who hasn't got the experience believe me on the long run is going to be a big issue for you so you don't want to invest your money and when you just want to place others you're beginning to hear stories 
so my advice is to go with someone who have got lots of experience on this platform as a starter i will advise you to go with someone people that have got experience of at least five years yeah because i don't think i've ordered from any supplier that is less than five years i think my list is five years so like i said i'm giving you these tips based on my own personal experience and research so i've ordered from people that are five years and above and i don't think i've had any issue that is that of a big deal i'm not saying you're not going to have issues but when you do all this research when you tick all these boxes it will help you to pick the right fit for your business third tip is always choose suppliers that accept trade assurance orders i know i talked about this on the other video i uploaded if you haven't watched it i'm sure it will be somewhere at the end of this video or you just scroll on my channel play around you see it and you will even see some other things that you know resonate with you that you want to watch and keep up with so always check suppliers that have got trade assurance okay with them you know the type of insurance this is a kind of insurance for your orders if anything happens you're not going to lose your money you're not going to get a bad product so that's why i advise people to go for p to go for suppliers that have got trade assurance take make good use of this because it is something that you know it's not it's not of any detrimental thing to you if you choose them and anything goes wrong you know that you're having your money back but if you don't choose them and then you just go with any supplier out there if anything happens tomorrow you lose your money you get a bad product or even not get any and still lose your money but with trade assurance mark suppliers you are sure of getting a good product at least what you ask for and if not you're getting your money back okay the way it works is alibaba will hold the money you pay until you receive your product from the suppliers and you're okay with it so that's when the supplier is going to get their money they don't once you pay it will tick on their own side to show that you've made your payments but they are not getting the money until they produce and ship to you and you get your products that's the only time alibaba is going to release their money through the trade assurance another thing the fourth thing i'll be talking about is check compliance certification for customer clearance yes so depending on what products you wish to import you may need some certifications to clear those products from customs okay so this is why i said earlier you need to go with people that have got experience on this platform imagine if you go with someone who is just starting maybe someone that have just written one year experience or two years experience and maybe within the two years they didn't really like have lots of customers or the first place they shipped to or the first product they shipped because a lot of them are not just selling only one product or not you know manufacturing one product so they might ship something today that don't really need those compliance certifications you know during custom clearance and you might be ordering something because of where you are the location where your product is going to be shipped to and you need those certifications i know there are some things that are shipped like from china that i needed some of those things i didn't even know it was my suppliers that told me about it so imagine if i had gone with someone who doesn't have the experience and they're just trying to find things themselves they're just trying to you know see how the business goes so I'll, it means i'm really going to be in a big real shape but 
I'm happy that I was able to go with supplier who really knows what she's doing in the business. So that way I was able to get myself out of the shit. So check all this. You need to check if they've, there is no harm in you asking them, ask them. For example, if you're going to sell electronics, say in the UK or in the US, I know Nigeria might need something like that as well but i'm really sure about this i know of uk because i've done stuff that needed things like that and us i know a friend who does that as well in the us so if you are going to ship something like that you need some certification some sort of fsc certificate so most suppliers can help you with them but if you go with someone who don't even know what you're talking about, how are they going to help you, right? So this is why you need to check their years of experience. So you can have the advantage, you know, ask them in advance if before you place your order, do you have this? Do you do this? Do you do that? Once you know the type of order to source on Alibaba, check if you require any certification i can't even like stress this enough check 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 you need to check to make sure that you know your shit you know you're honest very very well you don't want to be messing around okay so some countries really do why some countries don't so contact the suppliers if you don't see it on their page ask them message them on the alibaba app message them ask them or you can even use like instant messenger ask them if they know how they can if they supply those certifications to their customers they will help you they will tell you about it and tell you what to do okay or how to go about it i know a lot of them those chinese those people they really know a lot of shit they'll even tell you some things like oh this is what we need to do to reduce your custom charge and things like that so you need to do all those research you can contact them through any means or medium but like i said things that really needs to do with money my sister my brother i advise you to do that chat on the platform until when you have that good relationship that good rapport with your supplier that's when you can be taking your charts off the platform but when you're still sourcing you don't want to confuse yourself because their names really sound and look alike so but if you're chatting on the on the page there you're able to know like oh is this company is this company so when you now finally make up your mind on your top three or your top four you can now take their whatsapp number and you know chat them on your whatsapp so you don't confuse yourself so when you ask them about those like i said it's easy to just you know go back Ask them their real price. Some of them will just put a price, but when you start a, a price that will attract you, when you start chatting with them, then you know about different prices, or they can tell you that quote was for this, that quote was for that. So you want to know. Sometimes they can even give you a lower price. Maybe they are doing promo at the point you're asking them, and they didn't update it. So they will be able to tell you look we are doing promo the price for 100 units is this the price for 500 units is this so you want to ask them all those things and very important always ask them of their moq i believe if you watch the other video you will know what moq is by now but i will still not hold anything back i will tell you what moq is moq simply means minimum order quantity okay so what i mean by minimum order quantity is the minimum order you can place at a time 
So it means this company, let's say their, their MOQ is 100. It means if you want to buy 99 units, they are not selling to you. If you want to buy 90, they are not selling to you. It must be at least 100. So it can be 101 100 and 250 to 200 but this is the minimum order quantity this is the minimum units they can sell to you is 100 so you want to ask them that in person ask them don't look at the ports they have there sometimes they change they can shift for you depending on what it is so and some of them the more but this is not some of them so generally the higher your order, the cheaper it becomes. That's the truth. That's why you see where people are selling things, buy one, get one, and then someone else is, you know, selling one, and people are bashing you to say, oh, others are doing buy one, get one, but they don't know. You're just starting, and you don't have that money to order loads and loads that others are doing. You get what I mean? So, check their MOQ. But you can always negotiate. Don't be afraid to negotiate, okay? Always negotiate. I mean, price them things. Price them. You're just starting up. You don't have too much fund. So price them. Don't be scared to negotiate with them. Okay? So, as a beginner, I don't expect you to order loads you know high volume inventory when you're just starting you want to start with small ones first and then as days progress you will know what is good for you ask them for their pricing tiers this means the price of their price per unit it depends on how much order for example if you are ordering 200 units you will pay more than someone ordering 1,000 units or 2,000. So, the more or larger your order, the quantity, the cheaper it becomes per unit. So, this will help you to check if it's worth it to order large units or not. So, that's why I said you need to ask them. Ask them all this. They won't just start telling you. Some of them are really good. They can tell you if they notice that you're just starting for the first time. Why some will just assume, oh, you've been in the business, you know about it. But again, you don't just want to present yourself as someone who is just starting and really don't know what he or she is doing. You need to be confident enough. And... If you uh, maybe want to send them an email and stuff like that and you need like a template, you can contact me. I can be generous. <laughs> so ask them about customization. This is another thing you want to ask them. So if you are a private labeling, if you're private labeling a brand, you need to ask them the cost so you know because you don't expect them if they are selling this pen plain. So you don't expect them if they are to put your name or brand on it to sell it same price. No, it doesn't work that way. So you need to ask them about their customization prices as well. And take note of that. Get Make all your inquiries and get all the accurate pricing you need and keep last thing to ask them is what packaging options are available okay some of them offer free packaging you may not really like you may not you may not know until you ask that's the truth so always ask when you open your mouth and ask or type you're able to get information that you don't know but when you shut your mouth Short mouth, they say, is a word. It's <laughs> short destiny. <laughs> I don't know what I'm putting, if it's right or wrong, but I shall know I'm putting something. But just ask them this. You need to know all these things. They may offer you their packaging. If it's something you like, you can choose to go with that. But if you don't like it, it's something you can pay a little money and they will give you what you like. 
ask them i think what when you order product from them and they also produce your packaging for you it's cheaper than when you go looking for a whole new packaging producer or production company so i believe they are cheaper they will they will kind of pity you because you already bought things from them they want to keep you they will know that if they have customers like you coming every now and then it means they are in business just like the way you want to be in business that's the way your suppliers also want to be in business and also you need to build that relationship with them a lot of them they go a lot of them go out their ways to help you if you build that trust that relationship with them ask them questions know the right fit when you ask them all this it will help you to know the right fit for you also bear in mind the time zone difference yeah the different time zone you need to have that in mind so you're not sending them messages i mean it's broad daylight here so you're not sending them messages and after 10 minutes 20 minutes or one hour you're like these people haven't got back to me no chill they are sleeping so if you want them to give you a quick reply most people most of my audience i know they're in the uk us and nigeria so you need to always check that time zone i know most times when they are asleep is when we are awake when we are awake is when they are asleep so if you want to communicate with them i advise you keep late nights chat with them in the middle of the night around 2 3 a.m depending on where you are so this is the right time to get them that's when they are in the company that's when they're in their factory so you are able to get them and communicate freely with them another tip is to know the supplier to know if the supplier is a trading company a wholesale company or a manufacturer company yes so trading company and wholesale companies usually buy from manufacturers and resell to you right everyone wants to make money so everybody it means everybody is in business so they've got trading companies they've got wholesale and manufacturers you want to know which is the person you're communicating with what category is their company under is it a trading is it a wholesale is it a manufacturer i'm not saying anyone is better than other but there are so many benefits to all of them yeah but with me i always choose to go with manufacturer okay just because most manufacturers they also they know a lot of these things they've got people that do a lot of things all of the things combined for them the manufacturer some of them can provide you with people that will do product inspection for you people that will do shipping for you and all that and all that and all that and with manufacturers you are able to get a better customization offer let's say if they produce a product for you maybe the way they molded it you didn't like it you want them to make adjustments and so it's the manufacturers that are going to do those those things they are the ones that will be like oh let's do this she says she wants it this way that way and that way so they are the ones that will do that but if you're buying from trading company or wholesalers I mean they still need to go back to manufacturers so why don't you like communicate straight with the manufacturer that's my own personal opinion okay so i prefer to go with manufacturers it's good to note all this because if you don't know the difference between manufacturer and supplier i mean manufacturer and wholesaler you won't be able to no and also some of these ones their own prices are higher because they also want to make profit so you need to bear all that in mind as well the sixth 
tip I'll be talking about is finding supplier. No, what am I saying? The sixth tip is on finding a supplier with RFQ. Yeah, RFQ is request for quotation. Okay, so if you already know the products you want to sell, go on rfq.alibaba.com. What do you, what you do, sorry, what I'm trying to say is, hang on, I'm trying to like refresh this. I think I'm getting something messed up in my head right now. So, to find a supplier, you can also find a supplier on RFQ. RFQ simply means request for quotation, okay? So, for you to do this, go on rfq.alibaba.com what you do here is you submit your request let's say you already know what you want to sell you want to sell maybe you want to be selling frontal wigs 14 inches straight hair right so you know the specification of what you want you just want to go into this Site or this page put in the specific things you want or let's say you want to sell red shoes you already know you want to sell red shoes so you just go in there queuing red shoes with you know black sole and healy stuff like that heels so you want to put all these specifications and then submit it Trust me, within a space of an hour to two, a lot of suppliers are going to respond. They will respond to say, oh, this is what you requested. I do this, I do that, I do that. But then again, you also want to check if they've ticked other boxes we talked about. Left for me, I always find my suppliers myself. I don't usually do this request. For a quote i think i've just done it once which i was able to get a good supplier as well so you can try it with this you will be able to get suppliers that's a loss loss and loss of top suppliers that qualify this is very 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 time efficient if you don't have the time to waste to do the result if you're just like everything is ready you just want to get this done with so go on there and use that page okay it's rfq.alibaba.com so go there i'm going to put it down go there use that page and put your description people will come will get back to you they will respond with speed of light all right so the seventh tip is To check the supplier's catalog, yeah, click on the page to view this. They always have most of them always have their catalog on their page. So when you click on their page, you are able to view this, and it will give you idea of other products they sell in order for you to or in that niche. So when you want to expand. This is very important if you're thinking of doing a long-term business. Like, let's say you want to start selling West Trainer, right? By the way, you guys know I sell West Trainer. So, if you want to start selling something like West Trainer and you go to this page, these people that sell West Trainer, you have a look at their catalog and you see they sell things like workout wears as well and maybe things you can use in the gym or things you use to work out so that way you know that oh in future if i need to expand in the business these people are already good so i don't need to go and start looking for someone to produce me my gym wares and stuff like that so it would be worth it to have a look at your catalog before you place your order 
so the final tip is other samples once you have narrowed down to the top three suppliers i recommend you other samples to check out their products if it is all you wanted this is this is very important for you to see the products from different suppliers that way you're able to check the quality before you start selling it you're able to use them you're able to assess scan and see it's not just the ones you're seeing on your screen i mean on your phone or on your computer that you use to assess no you can't just sell things like that to customers so that way you will be able to avoid negative reviews trust me <laughs> if you please five customers right they may not leave you any review and if you displace just one customer that one customer is going to look for your website write reviews drop all of them tell bash you tell people why they should not buy from you and things like that so you need to avoid that and how do you avoid it by having a good access to the products before you sell them other samples before you make up your mind on who to go with on which of the suppliers to go with so other these samples put them on the table have a good look check them feel them use them you know touch them know if this is what you want know if this is what you as a person would pay for does that make sense so ask yourself if this product here is 100 pounds right so i as a person can i pay for this for 100 pounds so these are the things you need to ask yourself and by doing so you avoid all these negative reviews me i'm really scared of bad reviews honestly trust me there is nothing that spells shit out of me like bad reviews because if a customer gives you bad reviews babs <laughs> you're gonna lose tons of customers i'm telling you because lots of people when they want to buy things especially things they are not seeing that is online they go straight to reviews they read reviews i read reviews a lot so people go read reviews to check oh okay i think i'll go with this person i think i'll not so you want to give them the rooms to give you positive reviews all right so having said this eight points of mine i hope i'm able to share my knowledge on how to make your first order on alibaba don't go and give your money to someone that will scam you and then you come tomorrow crying i don't want you to lose money that's why i'm taking my time so if i were you if i want to start a business i don't have money to consult someone i don't have money to pay for all those consultations I will watch this video and i'll make sure i jot everything down i tick them before i place my orders all right if you're still here at this point it means you're enjoying this video we are adding some values to you or maybe these are some of the things you already know that we need to point at for you so you will see them more when you go on the platform right so having said all of this please like share subscribe if you've not done so please subscribe it won't even take you up to a second to just you know click that subscription button please do subscribe let's move this page let's move this channel to the next level so that every person will be seeing the things we are sharing here the knowledge we are dishing out here and by doing so we're able to give to the community so until i come your way again 
my name remains in human pocha thanks for always watching thanks for stopping by thanks for sharing thanks for liking and subscribing till i come your way again remain blessed thank you and enjoy the rest of your week